Man, I'll be honest with you. Um, this is my favorite day of the year. Favorite day of the year. I'm really excited. Listen, I don't want to tarry. Uh, I am so glad that you're here today. If you're a visitor with us, we are so, so excited that you're here to celebrate uh, with us uh, new life found in Jesus. Uh, and we hope that today is a blessing to you. Um, if you are a, a Harborite or uh, call your Harborite, that's a good word, isn't it? Harborite. Rick, I made it up, sorry. If you attend the harbor, I apologize. Um, hey, there's a few things that, wait, we'll start over. Start over, we're good? Just kidding. A few things that you need to know, a few announcements that you need to know. Uh, first of all is this, Harbor Kids Camp is coming up. Uh, if you have a child uh, from kindergarten to fifth grade, you're really gonna wanna hear that the deadline to sign up for Harbor Kids Camp is actually May the 4th. So you're gonna wanna make sure that this week you get online and sign your kid up. This is a high impact week for our children. It's always amazing and God has always does great things. And so uh, it's Monday through Friday, June the 13th through the 17th. If you need more information, hit our website up, theharbor.life slash children's, or you can reach out to Lindsay Ball. Her email is behind me. It's also on our website to get more information. And since we're talking about Harbor Kids Camp, we need volunteers for Harbor Kids Camp. Now you may be thinking to yourself, but Weston, I'm not qualified. And I can tell you this, you are very qualified to volunteer for Harbor Kids Camp. If you can breathe, if you've got a heartbeat and you can move a little bit, we have a spot for you. We can train you in whatever needs to be done, but we really do need volunteers. There's a training on June the 5th that you would have to attend to be a part of that. A lot of different roles. If that's something you'd like to do, again, you can find information on our website, but Farron Gillespie is gonna be your contact. Reach out to her and just say, hey, I wanna be your volunteer and she will excitedly email you back because I know Farron and she will be excited. So we have a newcomer's lunch coming up uh, on May the 15th. Our newcomer's lunch is all about you finding out more about the harbor. We'd love to invite you if you wanna know more about what goes on here, if you wanna know our staff, if you wanna to get to know some of our board and just kind of the ins and outs of the harbor, uh, May the 15th after our second service. It's in the foundry, which is on the third floor of the building next door. We'll have uh, food for you. There's childcare, you don't have to RSVP, just come and attend. And if you need any more information about that, reach out to Janice Vega. She would love to tell you more. And then last, certainly not least, on May the 15th, that same day, we have a new series called What We Bleed that you're gonna wanna be here for. The basis of this series is that, you know, the harbor was uh, really since day one built around these 12 core values. And the title would say this, man, if you cut us open, this is what we wanna bleed. Like if you are here at the harbor, this is what we bleed. So starting May 15th, put it on your calendar, be here. It's gonna be a really great summer series to be a part of. Today's gonna be a good day, y'all. Today already is a good day. Friends, I am so excited to worship. Um, can I pray for us really quick and just ask that the Spirit of the Lord would bless us and then I'm gonna ask us to stand. So God, uh, thank you so much for the new life in Christ that we get to celebrate today. And I pray that as the party goes on in heaven, such as the party goes on here as well. Lord, we wanna bless you, we wanna honor you, and Holy Spirit, we'd ask that you would be here so thick with us today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Friends, let's get up and let's worship.
Oh. 
start to the day. You guys can have a seat if you want to. You can stand if you want to as well. Weston, he is off the charts good. He's only made one mistake his whole life. It was this morning when he called us Harborites. Because in the Old Testament, the Moabites, the Hittites, all the ites got eliminated. They're all gone. So first mistake he's ever made, he's been baptized, he's good and everything. But I, I so agree with him. For me, this is the best day of the year. And there's some high, high standards. Oh my goodness, Christmas Eve. Man, we, we gathered together with so many people celebrating that Jesus came to this planet as a human being. It's huge. Easter two weeks ago, celebrating Jesus' resurrection from the dead. It is off the charts, but somehow this day for me, Trumps them all. Today, 62 people baptized today. Man, 62 stories. I wish we had time for you to hear every single story, every single one gripping, every, one, every detail known to God, every detail known to all of the powers of heaven. But we won't hear all the stories today, but there's some things that they all hold in common that I want to walk with you through today and tell you some things that each of these stories have in common. And if, oh, this needs to go up. How do I do this? Thank you very much. I was an engineer, but man, I lost it about 20 something years ago. But <laughs> so, so this is what they uh, each would hold in common. Each one of them God made with the deepest of love. And I'll, I'll do some illustration here. It may help you uh, follow and may help you get this. He created each one of them with this deep love. Uh, the scripture says that he created them, uh, one translation says, uh, fearly and wonderfully. Fearly means awesomely. Every single one of the 62, God created them and said, this is an awesome, wonderful creation of mine. He knew every single detail, every DNA, every strand. Every hope and dream he had, he created each one of these 62 with this stunning, stunning love. And his whole dream and plan was that they would have this intimate relationship with him through this life and beyond forever. It's true of all of us. In fact, it's true for all of us. I don't know if you know that, but, but God made you. And he said, awesomely and wonderfully made. He knows every single thing about you just as he does these 62. And then this is true of the 62 as well. Each one of them has sinned against God, and in their sin, they've created this great chasm between them and God. Every single one of them has, has done this, and it's true of all of us as well, isn't it? And, and the chasm is such that it cannot be bridged by a human being. The distance across is an infinite distance. The depth is an infinite depth. It cannot be bridged by a human being. True of all 62 of those, true of me, true of every single one of us in this room, true of all of humanity. Another thing that's true of them is, is they began in some form or fashion to realize this, and they began to try to do better, right, to improve, to shed sins, to be more loving, more kind, more patient, more helpful, and more generous. And they began to try to be better, but as they tried, every single time they found that their efforts would still fall short. They realized no matter how good they got, they still fell short. They could never bridge this gap between them and God. It's true of me as well. It's true of every single story in this room. We, we all hold that in common with the 62. But here's where the good news begins. It's 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to this planet. He died on a cross. And when he died on this cross, he had them in mind. He knew every single thing about them. He knew every single sin they would ever commit. I mean, this is 2,000 years ago. He knew them, every detail. And he actually paid the full price of every single sin they would ever commit. He paid the full price. He took the full punishment for that. So he built this bridge that would cover the distance, the chasm between this person and God. And the truth is, it's the same for our story as well. I mean, we parallel this story. Every single one of us parallel the story. Jesus came. He knew everything about you. He knew every sin you would ever commit, every sin I would ever commit. And he died for those sins. He paid the full price for us. The reality is, the bridge has been built. What's unique about these 62 is, they've crossed the bridge. It's not a physical bridge. It's not a bridge you can walk across with your feet. It's a spiritual bridge. There's only one way to cross it spiritually, and there's only one step that takes you across the entire bridge. 
And they've found that step and they've taken it. And that step is to say to Jesus, this one collective thing, would you forgive me and lead me? That's the step. They've authentically meant that. They have believed he, he came, he died, he rose, he lives today, he knows them. They have said, would you forgive all my sins and lead my life? And the moment they said that, then they've crossed the bridge. And that's where some of our stories part. I mean, that's, that's my story too. And that's the story for a whole lot of you in this room, but not for everyone. I mean, everyone up to this point, the bridge has been built. What's unique about the 62 is they have crossed the bridge and the only way it can be crossed. When they cross the bridge, every single sin forgiven. This intimacy with God that will simply grow through all of time, eternal address change for them, everything began to change for them in that moment. That, that's what we'll be celebrating today with them, is that they have crossed the bridge. So when you see each one of them go into the baptism pool, there's some powerful symbolism I want you to, to have in mind with them. The first is this, is this symbol of forgiveness of sin. They're going under the water. And what does water wash away? Like dirt and filth, doesn't it? This powerful symbol, when you see each one going under, they have been forgiven of all sin, past, present, and future. In addition, there's this symbolism of, of dying to the old life and rising to a brand new life. And the symbolism is when they go underneath the water, it's like a watery grave in the symbolism. If they died to the old person they were, they have been risen up to a brand new life, which is true of them. Have that in mind. Scripture also says that when they, when they died and rose symbolically, they did what Jesus did. They died and rose, and, and he says they have been united with Jesus. In fact, Scripture says, and this is so hard to fully grasp, says in that moment they trusted him, that he began to live in them. And they began to live in him. It's that close. This unity with Jesus. Then. And then one final thing that is symbolized here and really symbolized throughout this room is when they trusted Jesus, they were united with God's family. They were included with the entire family of God. That's why we celebrate baptism like this. I mean, one celebration, fill the room, celebrate as one single family. One single family. So... I won't walk through all of Luke 15 with you, but I will tell you this one part of it. I, actually, I'll tell you two things. It may be my favorite book in the Bible. If you wonder why, go read Luke 15. There's a place where it says, Jesus says that when one single person who's been lost from the Father is found, in other words, when one single person places their faith in me to forgive them and lead them, he says, in that moment, there's this party that explodes in heaven. So these 62, today's not their day that they trusted Jesus. They began that sometime previous to today. Whenever that day was, like, a heaven exploded over their coming to know Jesus. If you can picture with me, there was this banner unfurled in heaven with their name on it. God the Father, Son, Spirit, all of the angels, all the saints that have gone before, all of them are celebrating this one life family. So that happened on the day they trusted Jesus. So this is the day they very publicly are proclaiming to the world they've trusted Jesus. So this is our chance to hear their proclamation of that. This is also our day we learned that as a church family. This is our day to celebrate as well. So this is why I tell you that when you see someone come up out of the water, I mean, there is no limit to celebration. You can clap, you can shout, you can holler, you can dance, you can stand on your chair. I mean, this is our time to celebrate the reflection of the party that happened for them in all of heaven, in all of heaven. So 62 people, Father in heaven, thank you for uh, your deep love. Thank you for this stunning plan that's available to all of us. Thank you that all of us live up through the point of the bridge being built and being there. And many of us have crossed that bridge and there is no other life to live other than that. Maybe today, Father, you would be stirring someone to cross the bridge even today. We're about to celebrate 62 lives, Father. You've always loved with infinite love. Your son Jesus came and died specifically for each of the 62. Paid for every single sin, past, present, and future, gone, forgiven. You've given each of the 62 brand new life. In, in the truest sense, you've raised them from the dead. And they're united with your son, Jesus, now. And they're included in your family. And we cannot thank you enough. We celebrate you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Church, what do you think? You just watched 62 people brought from dead to life. No, no. I don't think you heard me. I said, we just watched 62 people come from dead to life. So this song right here couldn't be any more truer. Sing Scarlet says, had a crimson cost. You nailed my dead to that old rugged cross. An empty slate had the empty grave. Thank God that stone was rolled. Sing that chorus again, Scarlet says, and Scarlet says, Time to lose your voice. Let's let it go. Cheers. 
Hey, what's funny is you thought we were done. Ah, oh, we ain't done. Come on now, we're going to make some more noise. You're in the house of your father. You're in the house of your savior. You're in the house of the one who loves you and that died for you. They brought 62 people from dead to life this year. And more than that, you're in the house of the one that forgave your sins, that buried him in a grave, and then got up and walked out. How can we not scream? How can we not yell? How can we not shout right here in the father's house? Come on, church, let's sing. Let's sing. Let's sing. The words of Jesus. 
a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Will he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go search for the one until he is found? And when he's found it, when he's found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. And when he arrives at home, he will call together his friends and family and they will celebrate because the, the lost sheep has been found. And then Jesus says this, he says, I tell you this, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who is repentant and returns to God than over the 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. Well, that was, he talks about one friends and we got to celebrate 62 today. 62, come on man. to celebrate these stories today. Hey, before we leave, um, just a few things. Number one, if you came today prepared to give, I want to show you all the ways that you can give uh, toward the church. If God's asked you to do that, make sure that, yeah, make sure that you do that. And then I want to invite everyone in the room back next week for Mother's Day. Uh, our co-senior pastor and incoming pastor, Jeff Manis, is going to be teaching here on Mother's Day next week. Make sure you're in the building. Make sure that you are here. And then last, certainly not least, you know, Rick uh, taught us for the first 10 minutes this morning, and he, he shared this bridge diagram, which is basically the story of how the lost become found, how Jesus has bridged the gap back to the Father for us. And here's what could be true. God could have used that to stir in you that you need Jesus. And maybe today was the day or maybe you wanna talk more about it. We just wanna ask that you would um, courageously reach out. So if that's you, would you text LIFE to 63566? And who knows, maybe next year when we do baptism, you'll be in one of these pools. Amen? Amen. Well, friends, because they're partying in heaven, we're not gonna stop partying here today, okay? So I wanna pray for us, and then as you walk out today, there's gonna be a party on the lawn, there's fun for the kids, there's food, you can eat a lot of it, and let's have some fun as a family together. Lord Jesus, we worship you this morning. We continue to worship you for your goodness, for this reality that all of us are hopeless without Jesus. But because you are rich in mercy and rich in love, you sent your son to pay the price that we could not pay so that on days like today, we can meditate on this fact that we have been made alive in Christ. And so I pray that we're celebrating that today along with these 62 stories. Man, help us to have fun in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming today, friends.